Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes-Benz has an SUV for you. Visit MBUSA.com for special offers. Chris Berman, Hall of Fame broadcaster. Chris and Booger McFarlane, host of NFL Primetime every Sunday night during the NFL season on ESPN+. And Chris Berman now in his 45th year at the Mothership. Wow. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, pal. How are you? Proud of you. Listen, I'm, I had the wide shot just before we started. I was trying to identify all the doodads in front of, um, it, you know, in front of your microphone, but that would take several hours of inventory, wouldn't it? <laughs> would you like to <laughs> donate something to the man cave? Let me, I, I have rooms here, of which the door is closed that I can't get in anymore. So <laughs> I'm sure there's something there of interest. I'm not sure what I'll get back to you, Dan. You know what I would love? If you'd be willing to do this, one of your famous jackets that you wore on SportsCenter, maybe an autograph mauve sport coat that I could <laughs> that I could that I could uh, frame and put it up here in the man cave. Would you be well, open to that? Yeah, well, I I have to check that. That's a whole nother closet. That I <laughs> Look, I, the the one that you really want is it was before even you were with us for the Getty Red. We looked like Marriott Bellman, you know, for a while there in the, in the 80s. Uh, and the thing is, you wouldn't need as large a frame for those jackets as you would now. So, you are you know, I'll look into it. All right. I appreciate that. But when you look back, how wild was the Wild West when you first got to ESPN? Because I got there a few years after you guys launched because I was at CNN at the time. But the guys who were there talked about it was – was it the Wild West when you guys were doing Sports Center? Well, it was the Wild West in which we, at the very, very beginning, there were what, you know, 70 or 80 of us in the whole that did everything from president of the company to uh, someone that kept track of the tapes. Um, we were all, just about all of us, really young, 20s and 30s. We were rebels without a clue. Uh, <laughs> we, um, but we got to do sports all the time, and it's hard for a lot of your – you know this, but it's hard for a lot of your under 40, especially listeners, viewers, Dan, to understand the table. Forget ESPN 24-hour sports. What are you guys nuts? Walter Cronkite gets 30 minutes for the news of the entire world, <laughs> and you're going to talk about tennis in Budapest, huh, for five minutes, are you? So, I mean, I'm kidding a little, but – um, but it was more, would cable even make it? But we didn't, we, I don't want to say we didn't care. I mean, my dad would say, you think it's going to make it? Chris, I went, if it makes it two years personally, <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll know if I'm any good at that or not. And in the meantime, I'm doing the show at two 30 in the morning, Eastern nice drive home at four a during a snowstorm. The plows didn't come to five. <laughs> Um, but it was just sports. So there was a camaraderie that, that's like startups that make it, but it was more this, and I'll end this answer with, in retrospect, we rode cables coattails, as did CNN, which started in 1980. We were 79. And MTV, when it was MTV, was what, 82? Something like that, I think. So those three, just to pick out a few, rode Cable's coattails, but then Cable rode ours, and CNN included, you know. Um, so it's kind of an interesting progression and and a straight-up progression, which now, of course, Cable is not, what were we, at over 100 homes, 100 homes, 100 million homes. But to, you know, back then, I wouldn't trade it for anything. We were just... Um, we were, we were just, like I said, we were, we were Lewis and Clark without a compass, but we loved every minute of it. And I, I don't know if there was a moment that all of a sudden it changed at ESPN. Did you, was there acquisition or college basketball felt like Big Monday was a big deal? Uh, but do you remember if there was like that, oh my gosh, if not for that, then maybe we don't have ESPN. Okay, so the, the answer I was going to go with, but it wouldn't apply here, eight years in when we got 
the Sunday night football eight games and prime time went in. Not that, that I was doing the show, I had nothing to do with it. But that was the we were really going to be a major, maybe not at the time, networks, but a major player. So that's not the answer. I don't know. College basketball was the good idea, along with Sports Center, Dan, that, that you and Keith progressed from where Tommy and Bob and George and, and maybe I could go on and on and on and um, and so many others contributed to it. We had college hoops on, you know, in the middle of the week, right out of the gates. And that was let alone the tournament. And so that was a hmm. And then I don't want to say the NFL draft because we'd have it on Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. But again, it was a thing that you had to kind of find us if you really cared about it. But was there a one aha moment? I'll give you a, it's not the answer, but you'll find this interesting because you probably don't. So the year sailboat racing, not normally something that I would go to you and I talking about, okay? The year that the America's Cup fell to the Australians with the Wayne Keel in Newport <laughs> in 1983. Now, of course, this was like a Cuban election, the America's Cup up to that point. Like we would win, okay? Like, They'd have to sail across from Europe. They couldn't build the boat over here. I mean, that's one of the many rules that you don't think they were starting as a 15-point underdog. <laughs> of, course, of course they were. But it was the seventh and deciding race, and a Providence station had a helicopter or two. And we picked up the feed on a Tuesday, I want to say a Tuesday, afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern. And the ratings, which whatever they were at the time, were through the roof. I mean, it's not the Super Bowl, but you mean people are finding ESPN. They heard and somebody called someone and they're off. Hey, watch the seventh and deciding race of, of, of the America's Cup and the Aussies beat the Americans. And that was a moment to myself that I went, you know, Maybe we're actually on to something. So that's not the defining moment, but there's a moment that you and I didn't think we would be talking about 10 minutes ago. How much gambling was going on in the early days at ESPN? Um, we were all interested in the games. <laughs> uh, we didn't have any, a lot of money, myself included. So as far as it being dangerous and getting out of whack, um, I, I, you know, there were a few that, that, ooh, I better hit the Monday night game. And that's the, what I'm nervous about to this day when anybody can do it at any time. But it was more fun. The, 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 here's the fun that we had one time. So we had our, <laughs> our softball team that played at 10 a.m., right? Because we worked either till three in the morning or at least midnight or one. And it was with, um, couple of bars in Hartford, uh, post office, the, 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 the night post office crew. And I think the fee was 25 bucks, Dan, to play as a team. Yeah, you know, each person, if we want to play, we got to put up 500, whatever it was. And it was on me, which is a lot of pressure. Okay, we need a, this is uh, February or March, we're going to put whatever it was, a lunch bet. Like, okay, we're all going in for 25 bucks on on some college basketball game or an April baseball game. A lot of pressure. I was three for three. I, I, I so so I was a hero, I guess, not because I might be able to hit the ball, but but but, but to be honest with you, it's more like for fun. It wasn't it wasn't a lot, of, and, and I'm glad it wasn't. I mean, people have mortgage payments later on and, and shouldn't be doing that. We're talking to Chris Berman, the Hall of Famer. Um, you got the Pete Rozelle Award. What was that, 2010? Hall of Fame. Yes. Can we get Brent Musburger in the Hall of Fame for contributions to the game for the Pete Rozelle Award? He should have been in there long before me. I mean, that's for sure. I mean, he started uh, the pregame show. Yes, I wanted to be him, yeah. to be honest with you. One of the goals I have, boy, if I could if I could be Brent, I that'd be pretty cool wherever it was that I was going to be Brent. I'm not and I don't think I ever became Brent. I had his quote job. So that's that's crazy. Um 
I don't know what the, it maybe it was. Be, I don't know why I'm not on. You know, they don't we're not on any committee, Dan, that, you know, former winner winners. Yeah. Past are. What do you think? We're not asked. I'm not saying we should be um, not sure how that selection goes. They obviously let a lot of things slide when I got in. But <laughs> but but um, yeah, the fact that I. I just assume I know he's not, but I always assume, of course, he is. He's yeah. he invented the job. The NFL today was for us growing up. But, but you know what's amazing? That was a half an hour. Yeah, when we went on on game day at the time. Uh, you guys going to do an hour, and then an hour and a half. <laughs> it was oh my god, the, the the earth, the sky is falling. So yeah, he should. That's a good comment. I mean it. You know, I'm sure you've debated on your show Pete Rose baseball, let alone Bonds and Clemens. But Brent, for this, is not at the same. He is at the same level in our business, an all-time giant. I know you agree. Yeah, I do. I was wondering about this with the Jets. Why are certain franchises cursed? You've been a Jets fan for a long yeah. time. I grew up at Shea Stadium. Um, I wore white shoes into homeroom in eighth grade the day after they won the Super Bowl. <laughs> the bad news, that was the 1968 season. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like they've never, you know, Rex Ryan, Herm at him in the playoffs. I mean, it's not like they, you know, the tarp in Miami. I mean, the Chet fans know all this. I don't know that we could put our, our finger on it. It's not that they're – I still think they're probably more Giant fan than Jet fan, but nothing to do with it. I don't know. They're like – you're right. They're like pig pen in Charlie Brown, right? Like they there's a cloud. And I don't know that this lifts it with the coaching change. We'll see. Because they ball in with Aaron and they, my God, he's the Hall of Famer. And let's see what he's got. But however this year turns out, I know he wants to play longer. I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't have a solid answer for 50 plus, you know, and then the longest drought of getting in. There's a lot of eye rolling with the Jets in there. Oh, the Jets, right? Yeah. I mean, and they've had good teams. They have a great fan base, but and they everybody spells J E T S correctly. Um, I think spelling bee, right? Um, what happens first? You retire, or the Jets go to the Super Bowl? Oh, I retire. I think. I mean, that sounds like I'm not. I don't think they're going to get there this year. They could. I mean, they put all in, and then wherever Aaron takes him this and or next year, and then when he's out, then they reshuffle the deck, so that's not looking good. I'm not doing this till I'm 70 years in the business, Dan. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I, I may not do it till 50. It's not the point. The, the point wouldn't be at ESPN for 50 years. I didn't think of it till the summer, actually, when, hey, you're going to be 45 years. Really? It means I'm old. Um, so... That's like the Casey Stengel quote, which you remember, um, 1962, the 40 and 120 New York Mets. It's a good question. I thought of this as soon as you asked it. With the 40 and 120, which the White Sox lost more games, but at 41 and 121, their percentage is still a little better than those Mets. So they didn't quite get out of the book, by the way. Um, Casey said, the manager, man will walk on the moon before the Mets win a World Series. Now, of course, he was right, but it was only seven years later, 1969. Summer they walked, October they won. Yeah, no, they'll, they're will probably in the waiting room for a while still. I, I Look, I may not get that far. I got, you know, um, who knows if they'll have me. I hope so. Um, that's, I like what I do still, and I think, I think prime time is still fun for people to watch. I mean, I still hear about it and, and I do some other things and it's not about me. It's like, I still think the one thing about prime time and 
I went to Jimmy Patero a while ago. I said, do you think we can get the rights for this? This ESPN Plus thing is new, 2019. It's a big impetus. Maybe that's the last thing I can help you put on the map. You know, I'll come, I'll come back and do it. And it's not us alone, but they're in 35 million as opposed to 3 million homes. Well, 3 million homes is what we were in when 1979, to get back to your question. So I feel fulfilled in that it helped propel one last thing. It's not really about me. It, it, it helped us. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I'm not retiring. I mean, I ain't going past 50. I can't even see that. Jets win a Super Bowl in five years? No. No. Probably not. Uh, I hope. Before I let you go, the nickname that you th- that is the most underrated one of your nicknames that you use during, during Sports Center during the highlights. Mm. Well, because the famous, you know, Burt B. Humble, I love it. You're not talking about those. Julio, won't you let me take you on a sea cruise? I mean, that, I mean, they're, they're fun. Underrated. Ones that applied to where a player played. And, you know, you, don't, you can't invent those. Um, Royce Clayton was a shortstop of, of, of San Francisco. Royce Aroni Clayton, the San Francisco <laughs> Street. And then this was actually being an American history major. That's a good question. Carlos Baerga was a really good player, mostly with the Indians, right? I can still say the Indians. That's what they were. Um, But he came to Boston late in his career. And I went, okay. Carlos, one of by land, two of by sea, three of Baerga. And I thought that was was fitting. Boston. Yeah. Those are the kind of ones that, that took a little extra, maybe 20 <laughs> seconds of, of limited brain power rather than 10 seconds. I don't know. Not bad, right? Yep. Yep. Hey, great to see you. 45 and counting. Go get them. Uh, What's your number? How long you been in the business? Close to me. Um, I've been doing it 40 years, so yeah. I, got a, I got an end game, though. Christmas Eve of 2027. Going to pull the plug on this show. But, I mean, all the, the all the Christmas lights go out. You just pull yep, it. And it. Yep, yep. What yep. happens to this stuff in front of the desk, though? I'm concerned. I this is the Dansonian, and we're just going to let people come in, I guess, and take a tour. You know, see all the stuff that <laughs> I've compiled for 40 years, and they'll be able to see your jacket, the autographed jacket that we're going to get from you soon. I want to see if mauve is still, it's a word, it's a color that's kind of gone out of style. So therefore, I'm not looking to wear it. Listen, I, I'm, I'm proud of where you've gone, not since you with us, but I, I've told you that before. Sports Illustrated writing for a while, these shows, you're still must listen. So people enjoy you. People enjoy your point of view, the guests you're able to get other than this one. and. Um, much appreciated. I'm proud of you. And look, we're survivors, Dan. Uh, not quite sure how we are, but we are. We're dinosaurs. Well, that's for sure. We may not be T-Rex. We may be like Stegosaurus. That's you know? okay. That's, yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Nice to see you, my see friend. See you, bud.